What's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next topic. We're now going to talk about estimating a population mean with confidence intervals. And this topic is a pretty big one. There's going to be a lot of new concepts introduced here. Confidence intervals. We're also going to introduce a new distribution, something called a T distribution. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, how it compares to a Z distribution. So just a lot going on here in the uh, next few videos. And to actually explain it is kind of tough too, but I'm going to try my best. But as a heads up, you may have to rewatch this a couple of times for everything to sink in. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a population. So I'm going to kind of show you visually what's happening first. Right, some kind of population could be anything. Maybe all of the people in the world could be all the people in a certain country, in a certain city whatever it is, just a certain population. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a subset of that population, sort of a smaller piece, a sample. Okay, and we're going to be using that sample to try to come up with the best estimate for the population mean, the population average, whatever the average we're looking for is. So it could be maybe um, the average money that someone spends on food per day in Toronto, right? So the population would be the whole city of Toronto, and then the mean would be the average money per day spent. And we would take a sample, right, a sample of people, instead of getting everyone in Toronto, which is what? A population of like 2.7 million, that's going to be quite costly. We would take a sample and see what's going on in that sample and then maybe try to create a general statement for the population. So a couple of things you're going to be running into, a couple of notations, you're going to start seeing these things here, right? Whether in your textbooks and your slides or any questions you run into. So this here, this uh, mu, it basically represents the population mean. And that's what we are going to be trying to estimate using the sample. And then this sigma here, this represents the population standard deviation. All right, so standard deviation, hopefully you remember what that is from the first stats class. Now this x with this bar up top, this is going to represent the sample mean. So when we take this sample, from the population, it's going to have its own mean, right? And it's going to be represented by x bar. And then this s bar here is the sample standard deviation. So that's the first thing I wanted to go over because a lot of times students just get confused with all these symbols. You're going to see all these symbols coming up. I'm going to be using these symbols as well. So I thought I would just start off by mentioning what these symbols here are. And actually there's one more the n value, and the n value is basically the sample size that you're going to be taking out of the population. All right, so uh, yeah, these are the symbols I could think of for now, but if any in the future come up, I'll be sure to explain what they are as well. All right, so basically population, we're taking a sample, we're going to perform some stuff on the sample to try to get an estimate for this population mean. Now the question, the main question to answer in this section is how confident can we be in estimating the mean of a population using the sample, right? How confident can we be in estimating the population mean using only a sample from the population? And there's actually a bunch of answers to this question, there's a bunch of variables, a bunch of factors. One obvious factor I'll maybe mention here just briefly is the sample size, right? How big is the sample you're using? So for example, if I go back to the scenario I mentioned before where we're estimating the mean or the average money a person spends per day on food in Toronto, well, the population in that case is 2.7 million people. So if we take a sample, let's say of five people, 
right, and try to estimate the population mean using a sample of only five people out of 2.7 million, how confident can we be that we're getting a correct estimate for the population? Probably not very confident. So the higher the sample size, the more confident we can be in getting that estimate of the mean. The problem is, is that the larger sample that you use, the more resources that takes, the more people you have to interview, the more people you have to find, et cetera, et cetera. Now to estimate the population mean using a sample, we're gonna be using something called a confidence interval. And confidence intervals, they can get pretty technical. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by showing you generally what they are, what their general format is, and then I'm gonna get more technical and show you how to actually find them. So to finish off this video, I'm gonna keep it general first, explain these generally. In the next video, I'm gonna show you technically how to find them, depending on certain scenarios. So to start off explaining confidence intervals, I'm gonna make a statement here. Let's say that I can be 60% confident that the population average, or the population mean, let's say, of money spent on food per day, per person, and the population, remember, we're looking at Toronto as an example. Let's say using a sample, I could say that I'm gonna be 60% confident that the population mean of money spent per day per person is gonna be $10 plus or minus $2, right? So this here is a confidence interval, okay? So this $10 here, it represents always the sample mean. So whatever sample I took, whether it was 100 people, 200 people, whatever it was, this here is the sample mean. But can we just use the sample mean and say that's the population mean? No, we can't do that. So we have to add a buffer to the positive side and the negative side. So we add this plus or minus $2 here. And this plus or minus $2, this here is called the margin of error. And there's actually ways to find this. The sample mean, obviously, it's easy to find. You would just take the uh, total divided by the sample size and you would get that. This margin of error is a little bit more technical and I'm gonna show you how to do that in the future, but again, I'm just showing you the general format for now. Right, so we could be 60% confident that the Toronto mean of money spent per day per person, let's say it's $10 plus or minus $2. And if we were to make this into an interval, basically $10 minus $2, that would give us $8. And then $10 plus $2, that would give us $12. So we could be 60% confident that the mean is going to be somewhere, the population mean is going to be somewhere between $8 and $12. 60% confident. So this here is called a 60% confidence interval. And again, there's actual ways to get these numbers here, right? I'm just kind of giving you numbers again, just generally, right? To get this number, it's gonna depend on a lot of things. It's gonna depend on the sample size to get this, also depends on the sample size. It's gonna depend how confident you wanna be Right? So it's going to depend on a lot of things, but again, just showing you the general format for now. Right, So this is the sample mean, and then we have a plus minus margin of error. You could think of this as like a buffer almost, right? because we can't just say the sample mean is 10. That means the population mean is going to be 10. We can't just do that. We have to give a plus or minus buffer. And so 10 minus 2, 10 plus 2, we get 8 to 12, and that is the 60% confidence interval because I know... Notice how at the beginning I said I want to be 60% confident. Now, sometimes you'll be given this confidence interval like this in this format, and they'll ask you to find the margin of error. 
it's pretty simple. You just take 12 minus 8, right, the difference, and then divide it by 2. Because the 10 is right in the middle, 12 minus 10 is 2, 10 minus 8 is 2. So that's how you find the margin of error if you're given a confidence interval like that. Now, here's the question. What if I want to be more confident? What if I want to be 90% confident, not just 60% confident? Then what? How is this going to change? Well, the sample mean is still going to stay the same, right? We're not getting more sample. Uh, we're not increasing the sample size. We're not decreasing it. The sample is still exactly the same. But because we want to be more confident now, we have to give ourselves a larger margin of error. Right? So instead of $2, this will maybe be like $3 now. And so this will change. So instead of 8, we'll have 10 minus 3, which is 7, and then 10 plus 3, which is 13. Okay? So this would be a 90% confidence interval. Right? Does that make sense? So a little confusing, I know, but if you want to be more confident in an estimate for the population mean, you have to give yourself more buffer space, okay? And the margin of error is gonna be higher. So the higher confidence percentage the higher the margin of error And so the larger the confidence interval. Notice we went from 8 to 12 to 7 to 13. Right? So this is pretty important to know. So as a summary of what I just did, 60% confidence interval, if we're estimating the population average of how much money is spent on food per day in Toronto per person, the 60% confidence interval was $10 plus or minus 2, so that was 8 to 12. And if we want to be more confident, we want to get a 90% confidence interval, it's $10 plus or minus 3. So that margin of error increase. So the confidence interval was wider, 7 to 13, right? And I wrote that down here. Higher confidence percentage you want, the higher the margin of error, the larger the confidence interval. Now, in stats, what you want to do is you actually want to try to decrease this margin of error without violating any principles, right? So if you want to be more confident, you're going to have to, and you keep all other variables constant, you're going to have to increase that margin of error, right? So you're going to have a larger confidence interval. So question is, how can we decrease the margin of error? Right? Or how can we tighten that confidence interval? Right? Get a more precise estimate. Because notice that 8 to 12, that's a more precise estimate than 7 to 13. The trade-off is we're not as confident. Right? So how can we decrease margin of error or tighten the confidence interval? What are some things we could do? Well, number one we can lower the confidence percentage that we want. We can lower how confident we are with the estimate. And that kind of sucks, right? That's kind of a shitty type of way to tighten up that confidence interval, right? Lower our confidence percentage from 90 to 60. Notice that margin of error is going to decrease then. So that's one way to do it, not the best way. Another way we can do it that's pretty intuitive is we can increase the sample size. Remember at the beginning I said if the population is 2.7 million and you use only a sample of five people, how confident can you be in estimating the population mean of 2.7 million people with a sample of five? I mentioned probably not very confident. That makes sense. So if you increase your sample size, that would actually decrease your margin of error. It would tighten up the confidence interval. So if we kept the 90% confidence interval, 
and we just increase the sample size, that's going to decrease this margin of error. It's going to tighten up this confidence interval. And I'm going to show you that in the future videos. So that's an intuitive way to do it. Another way to decrease this margin of error, it's a little less intuitive, is we can know what the population standard deviation is, right? So this population, we don't know the mean of it because that's what we're estimating, right, using the sample. But sometimes we'll know what the standard deviation of the population is, and sometimes we won't. But if we do know what the population standard deviation is, then that's actually another way to decrease that margin of error or tighten up that confidence interval, right? It's a little bit less of an intuitive way, but nevertheless, it is a way. We basically, it is kind of intuitive because we have more information about the population. We don't have the mean, that's what we're estimating, but we do know the standard deviation, which should make us more confident with our estimate, right? So three different ways to decrease that margin of error or tighten up that confidence interval. We could lower the confidence percentage, we could increase the sample size, or we can know the population standard deviation. And actually, all three of these things here are going to affect that margin of error calculation. And that's actually a good segue into the next video because now I'm gonna actually show you how to get that, right, using all three of these variables.